And welcome back to the big show, everybody. Uh, we welcome back Will Haskett, who was on with us at the beginning of the year from Hawaii when the PGA Tour season was just getting started. And Will's been real busy. Uh, Sirius XM, PGA Tour Radio, ESPN. He's one of the top guys, uh, in, in my opinion, one of the top young sports announcers in the U.S. of A. And, and just because he's wearing a Cubs sh shirt, we don't hold that against him. Will, good to see you. How are you? Uh, I'm just glad that you're classing up the place, Doug. Uh, I've got to get in the shower. i got a show to record later today. I'll look better. I'll have a suit on later today. But I'm still in the midst of the research process right now. So I appreciate you letting me come on with my hoodie. And uh, We need it. we got a series with the Astros coming up here starting tonight. So, and we need it after getting – they lost a series away. They, what, two and two against the Marlins at home just does not inspire confidence if you're a Cubs fan right now. <laughs> well, I'm a Cardinals fan. we got our own yeah. problems. So. Uh... I don't know. <laughs> Hey, let's talk. Let's talk golf because obviously uh, it's special right now when you have the number one player on the men's side, Scotty Scheffler, uh, winning four out of five, uh, and Nelly Corder, the number one player on the ladies' side, winning five in a row. Will I mean it, this is an an incredible time for you, me, and all of us who cover golf. And, and my first question is: Is it getting enough publicity nationally? I know in our little circle yeah. we talk about it ad nauseum, but is it getting the proper? play it deserves nationally uh that's a great question i probably not in terms of yeah. its dominance because this is the best combination of top male and female golfer at the same time since tiger and annika in 2005 and if you think about what was going on in both of those sports at the time like tiger woods was a a universally understood entity and superstar and Annika was what a couple of years removed from playing at colonial and so she was probably about as peak as you could have in terms of female popularity so no but i also wonder 20 years removed like how how mainstream any athlete in any sort of niche sport could kind of be at that same point in time so I want to put them in the context of how great it is that like, we have two golfers that are going into major championships and you're wondering, can anybody actually beat them? It's them versus the field type of conversations. It's, it's amazing that they're both doing it at the same time. They kind of do yeah. it in very similar ways. They're very unassuming, very grounded, uh, incredibly mature beyond their years individuals who both have incredible ball striking numbers and their putters at times can be a little bit sketchy it's it's a really remarkable how similar both of these runs have sort of been but no i don't think so i think nelly has an opportunity to do more for her sport than scotty does in his for whatever reason and i think you've seen this doug is you know scotty's the best player in the on the planet and i don't even think he's the face of the pga tour you know rory <laughs> still carries as much of that burden jordan jordan carries as much of that burden and scotty scheffler's beating everybody's brains in and doesn't feel like he has to answer a lot of questions about what's going on with the pga tour and on nelly's side Nelly now is definitely the face of women's golf. And with this wave of Caitlin Clark mania, and we've got it here in Indianapolis, obviously, with her coming to the fever, right. it, it, this is a huge moment for women's sports. So I'll be really curious to see the hype going into the next major for the ladies is can they generate that? Because, listen, Nelly was doing five-minute hits on SportsCenter last week prior to the start of the Chevron. Like, we don't normally get that from the top players in the women's game. So to have an American who's overpowering the sport right now on the ladies' side, it has the potential, but it's going to sound crazy, Doug, but I think she has to keep winning this year. And that's it, that's unfair to her, but like, how much can she keep winning? Can she win another major? Can she win a U.S. Women's Open? Can she, can she do something in that vein? I feel like that's the next step to consciousness of the mainstream sports fan. You know, you touched on a lot of things I'm going to ask you about. Of course, sure. that's what happens when you interview a, a guy in the same business, right? Um, filling time. But I know you're in, We're always filling uh, time. You know, it's, <laughs> my answers are like, hey, I got I to gotta fill to the next break. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, no. Um, and you're a numbers guy. And right now, Scotty's scoring average is like 67.3, yep. which is off the charts. And Tiger, uh, 68.15 uh, is the best ever recorded I mean, who knows what they did 30, 40 years ago. But anyway, you remember, remember that year. I mean, yeah. is it fair to compare Scotty to Tiger? I mean, because, I mean, I know it's apples and oranges, but what Scotty's doing is as good or maybe even a little better than what Tiger did 20, 25 years ago. I think it's fair, but I think in this instant gratification culture that we're in, in social media, we compare way too quickly. You know, Scotty hmm. Scheffler hasn't won a professional tournament on the PGA Tour 
I think what after the month of April yet. <laughs> That's like, right. It's, I mean, he's won all of these tournaments. Won ten times. He's won two Masters, but he's yet to be super relevant in June, July, August. When I think people start to pay even more attention to golf. Obviously, the Masters is the math is the the major spotlight on it. But it becomes real golf season here after the NBA playoffs and before football season kicks in. And Scotty hasn't been as relevant then as he has been early in years. So I do think it's a bit unfair to do the comparisons because we're comparing a short body of work so far to a full season's worth of work for Tiger. And we don't really know what Scotty's going to do the rest of the way this year. But it's fun to play with it. I mean, I think he's leading in 30 different statistical categories in the PGA Tour right now, which Crazy. is just insane. His birdie average is incredible. All of his strokes gain numbers are obviously incredible. So, yes, it's nice to take these little snapshots. But I think we've also had glimpses of guys – over the course of the last 10 years that have had two, three, four, five month windows that we say, oh, it's Tiger-esque. And it's unfair to them because it's also disrespectful to Tiger who did these for 12 months or 24 months <laughs> or five years right. in a row. So I think we asked that question now. It's like, it's probably unfair to both. It's unfair to Tiger's legacy and it's unfair to the realities of Scotty Scheffler, but it's okay to re-examine this question in July if he's won three more times. Now, tell me in this age of uh, the media craze that we live in, and we're a part of it, uh, and, and we know Scotty. I mean, you've interviewed him. We know his mom and dad and his sisters. I mean, they're, they're Very phenomenal well. people. We know his dad probably more than anybody. <laughs> exactly. I'm surprised Scott isn't right here right now. Scott Scheffler, <laughs> you know, participating in this conversation right now because he might be the friendliest parent in the history of the PGA Tour. Well, and then on the other side, I've never met Nelly, but I, you know, I, I, I remember at the PNC with her dad, yeah. you know, the father, son or the father, daughter, you know, she went up and got her picture with Tiger and met him for the first time. It was a yeah. very cute moment. I mean, I, her personality is great, I, but will they both seem to be reluctant superstars when it comes to the media? I think it's just their personality. They're not, they're not flamboyant people, right? But do they, do they need to be more flamboyant maybe at this stage of where they are? If you want clicks and you want to sell, yes, but they don't, they don't care about that. And, and honestly, Doug, and I think, and this is probably as simple as I can answer this question, and you know this to be true, to be the best right now in golf takes sort of that stoicism, right? Hmm. Like it's really yes. hard to be an animated, emotional person, an attractive sort of character, and be as good as they are week in and week out. Now, Scotty talks about how much he loves the pursuit of great golf shots. He loves <laughs> to practice. That He's more of a golf nerd than I think his persona leads on. But he's so grounded. He's so rooted in his faith. You know, Nelly is so rooted in not being obsessed with the celebrity. And I think growing up in a household with the with, with a, an, an athlete father who could sort of understand the, the pitfalls of that helped as well. But no, like to be a great golfer right now, it's way better if you're stoic and you're sort of robotic. And they are. And that, that that's not going to make them the most attractive from a marketing standpoint fully. But they don't care. One, they don't care about it. And two, they know that if they get obsessed with that, then it's going to probably lead to worse results. So it's tough, but they're not going to stop being who they are because who they are right now is working both on and off the golf course, which I think is really a big part of it. They are so happy and calm in their at home lives and able to separate themselves from that celebrity it's what makes them so good. It's it's really quite admirable when you listen to them talk about their perspective and how mature they are about things. You know, Will, it's amazing to me, though. I mean, we have these two young American, and they're superstars, uh, what they're accomplishing right now. And yet, uh, network television, the Masters, the ratings were down. Now, I'm not sure if they factor in all the uh, digital stuff, you know, Masters.com, yeah. Paramount+, Plus, CBS. I mean... And, and you were involved in the coverage uh, last weekend in Nelly, you know, the streaming that ESPN put up just to see her. I mean, who knows if that factors in or how it does. But overall, the ratings, they say, are down. Uh, I, mean, wait, I, I haven't seen Chevron ratings yet. Have they come out with Chevron <laughs> ratings yet? I haven't seen them. No, but, you know, I just, I, the men's I just ratings wonder. Men's ratings for sure. Yeah, I mean, how, is, is that... Is that panic mode? Is it just the way it is because it's post-Tiger and he hardly plays anymore? Are we where we probably should be? I mean, what do you think about the ratings and the fact they're a little bit down and yet we have these two stars that are doing amazing things? Yeah, I'm curious. I'll wait and see. I haven't seen Chevron ratings. I'm assuming those ratings will be up substantially from where they were last year. And if that's the case, then it's kind of that it's against the Caitlin Clark sort of effect right now. And I'll say this broadly. Um, I think women's sports right now are 
more attractive, especially in golf than men's sports because of the fractured nature of men's professional golf. These guys are making so much money. Um, that we're so sick and tired of hearing about the split, these guys wanting this or wanting more or what the fields are supposed to be. I thought the Masters was going to be a great, great measuring stick of where the temperature was of the fans and for it to be down 20%. When it was kind of a similar vibe to what it was last year, you know, you had a dominant player who ran away late like Rom did. There was a lot of similarity this year to what there was last year in the Masters. And for it to be down as much as it was to me sort of shows that golf has lost some of its, um, you know, inherent fan base on the men's side because of they're just they're sick and tired of, of where the status of the game is now. Um I would expect the women's ratings to be significantly up. And I don't know if that's men's fans leaving for the women's game or if it just shows you if you're doing it right and you really believe in this pursuit. And again, the women's game feels a lot more pure than the men's sport does right now because the money is not nearly as equal as it is. Then I think that's that shows you what the fans really want. They want to see that competition. They do want to see a dominant athlete. But on the men's side, they're just sick and tired of guys bickering over who's going to make x amount of millions of dollars which i think has really turned off a huge chunk of the golf fan yeah well said um all right i gotta ask you this before we close uh and <laughs> you knew the grand slam question was coming and obviously for the ladies you have the extra major championship which makes it really hard really yeah, hard. Really hard. yeah. but but start with scotty i mean and he's and the odds have already come out i mean he's the favorite now to win the last three majors yep. uh and you can bet on him winning the grand slam something that's never been done Obviously, we had the Tiger Slam. Yeah. He won the last three, and then the carryover of the Masters. Oh, 2000, 2001. That was, that was really cool and incredible when you think about it. Um, what, what do you think? Is it, I mean, are you just going to excuse it, or do you think there's a chance, Will? You know, it's funny. I saw someone post the odds that his, that Scotty's odds to win the Grand Slam are what, like 80 to 1 or something yep. like that? And, they compared him to the guys who are 80 to one to win the PGA championship coming up next month. And I said, if you forced me to take one of those bets, I probably actually would bet Scotty Scheffler to win the grand slam <laughs> over some of those guys that are 80 to one, not to say that Scotty is going to do it, but just more of a, well, it's just as much of a crap shoot that one of those guys at 80 to one would actually win the major against all of these top sort of guys. Uh, no, it's not going to happen. The, the game is too deep. We, we do come together. Can he win two this year? Yeah, I think him winning two majors in the same season would be a te- – that, that's kind of the measuring stick of what greatness looks like now in sports. If you can rattle off two majors in a year, I think that is as close as you can get to Tiger-level sort of greatness because of the depth of the sport. But we also have to keep in mind, if everything goes according to plan, it's got to be a father by the time we show up at Valhalla in Louisville. Right. How does that change? It shouldn't change what happens on the golf course, but – it, he's got a lot going on off the golf course over these next couple of weeks before he gets to that major. And which is what I thought made Nelly's run last week. So impressive is that yes, Scotty has been winning all of these events in or in, in succession, but he didn't show up to the masters off of four in a row chasing sort of that streak of history. It was the first major of the year. Nelly did show up having to answer all those questions. Well, Scotty's going to show up to the PGA now having to answer the questions of, Hey, you're the best player in the sport can you win the career grand slam or can you win the grand slam this year? Can you put two majors in a row? It'll be the first time this year that he's really had that heightened focus. I didn't really think he got that much focus this past week at RBC heritage. It was just like, it was a celebration of his master's win and it's a signature event and he just happens to go out and win it. The next time he shows up to play golf, there'll be way more questions about what are you doing? And it has to trickle into his mind a little bit. So I I don't even think he wins at the PGA. It's just too deep of a field. Well, well, take our breath now because he's off this week and Nellie announces that she's off this week. So, yep. whew, I guess we'll get a reprieve, although I'd like to see him keep playing. But That'd you get team fun. golf in New Orleans, Doug. It gets the yes. best, it's a fun format and the best food week of the year. I, I'm so jealous <laughs> of your week. You get good eats and you get uh, team golf. It's great. Yeah, and, and Eric Cole is playing with my friend who I grew up with in Paducah, Kentucky, Russ Cochran. Wow. How about that team? How that? How about that team? How'd that come? Well, from? Russ's uh, son is Eric's caddy, Reed oh, Cochran. Got it. And so, and they're friends from South Florida. They play at Cuesta Country Club. Blah blah blah. And so, um, so yeah. So I guess Russ is blowing the dust off the clubs and <laughs> coming back for the team deal. I mean, that's some heavy lifting from Eric. But you know, no, no offense <laughs> to Russ, but I mean, 
That's, <laughs> if, if Eric Cole can get that team into the weekend and the rookie <laughs> right. of the year last year is definitely proven his might right there. Yeah, the odds are good for that team. I mean, you got big odds. <laughs> that, that'd be a good, a good one. Time, though. Everybody has a good time in New Orleans. Yeah, it'd be great. Hey, Will, we appreciate it as always. Uh, keep up the good work, my friend, and don't work too hard. Come on, take a day off occasionally. Uh, sometime in June. I'm going to take a little time <laughs> off in June. I think it's the, it's the time frame right now. Thanks, Doug. All right.